Mr. Speaker, it's a great privilege to be called to make my maiden speech and to follow the Honourable Member for Basingstoke. Mr. Speaker, it's truly an honour to be representing the constituency of Aberavon, where we are surrounded by the stirring spectacle of the Upper Avon Valley and the gentler rural beauty of Margam and Skewen. Looking out from our magnificent Aberavon Beach, you survey the Celtic Sea and further the Atlantic Ocean, symbol of my constituency's long, proud and productive engagement with global trade and industry. It's hardly surprising that Aberavonites have drama in their blood when one considers the drama of the landscape into which they are born. Anthony Hopkins and Michael Sheen are just two of the local lads made good, but perhaps the most famous of Aberavon's sons is Richard Burton, who is said to have mused that the Welsh are all actors. It is only the bad ones who become professional. <laughs> I am, of course, relieved to say that he is not on record as having said the same thing about the Welsh and our politicians. Mr Speaker, I was born about 30 miles to the northeast of Aberavon in Tredega, as was my father. My mother is, of course, from another country altogether, known as North Wales. <laughs> they have always worked tirelessly, tirelessly, Mr Speaker, to combat injustice, and their dedication to public service has inspired me throughout my life. Yeah. When I left South Wales as a young man, I took that spirit of public service with me. I have been lucky to have lived and worked in Brussels, St. Petersburg, Sierra Leone, Switzerland, and a number of other exotic foreign lands, such as England. <laughs> Having returned to my roots, I am very proud to describe myself as a global Welshman. I believe that Wales is a nation with the ability to punch far above its weight, and I hope that I will have an opportunity to contribute to that worthy cause. Mr Speaker, I must take this opportunity to give tribute to my predecessor, Dr Howell Francis. He is, as the House will know, a noted historian and respected parliamentarian. His work on the 2004 Carers' Equal Opportunities Act was truly life-saving. Mr Speaker, in Aberavon, we like to connect our proud history to our promising present and our ambitious future. It is in this spirit that I wish to join those calling on the Ministry of Justice for the posthumous pardon of Dick Penderyn, a minor and son of Aberavon, yeah, yeah. hanged in, in 1831 for his part in the Merthyr uprisings. Yeah. Since the time of Dick Penderyn, it is the steel industry that has come to shape the landscape, the economy and the hopes of Aberavon and the Port Talbot Steelworks is the beating heart of our community. Sadly, Mr Speaker, that plant is now at the centre of a serious dispute due to the unjustified action of Tata Steel in promoting changes that would greatly weaken the workers' pension scheme. I must therefore take this opportunity to urge Tata Steel to return with urgency and good faith to the negotiating table and to exhort the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State to engage with the management of Tata in Mumbai and Europe for I fear that if Tata does not act rapidly now, then we shall be seeing the first strike action in the steel industry in 35 years. Mr Speaker, the topic of today's debate is devolution and growth. And as we know, this government claims to be focused on creating the conditions for sustainable economic growth by rebalancing the British economy and broadening our manufacturing base. I therefore wish to use the platform accorded to me today to urge the government to understand that it must do more to support the British steel industry. To this end, I call upon the Secretary of State to implement policies that will revitalise UK supply chains, reduce the cost of energy and ensure that business rate valuations are reformed rather than to, to encourage rather than penalise investment. Yeah. I also call upon the Secretary of State to do everything in his power to enhance foreign investment, which can only be guaranteed by Britain staying within the European Union. Yeah. The prospect of the UK leaving the EU is already casting a long shadow of uncertainty over the British economy. There is a real and present danger that our withdrawal from the EU would trigger Tata Steel's withdrawal from the UK, and the impact of such a move on the lives of my constituents would be truly disastrous. Mr Speaker, I was wondering whether anyone in this House may recall what a pro-European Tory looks like. Well, I've managed to find one, and he is Lord Geoffrey Howe of Aberavon, no less. And he said, we have done best when we have seen Europe as an active process which we can shape, often decisively, provided we allow ourselves to be fully engaged in it with confidence, with enthusiasm and in good faith. It is with that attitude, Mr Speaker, that I, as the representative of Aberavon, will strive always to get the best deal for my constituents. 
My realistic vision of that deal is of the green jobs created by projects like the Swansea Bay Tidal Lagoon, of the creative in innovation coming from the Bay Studios, and of the cutting-edge research coming from our University Bay campus. Funded by the Euro European Investment Bank and made possible by the Labour government in the Welsh Assembly, the campus is an inspiring example of the tangible work that government can do to catalyse regional economic development for the future. And this, Mr Speaker, is a future for which I shall fight relentlessly. Yeah.